body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to mention that Christ would cry out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The only time, any separation in all of eternity past and all of eternity future that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were willing to allow was the moment that all of the world's sin was poured out on the Lord Jesus and God would turn His back as Christ paid the atoning price for you and me. He said, that's what you need to go preach. You go preach repentance. That people turn away from sin, people turn away from self, and they turn to the Savior. He said, listen, you preach repentance, and then I want to say, as we come quickly now to a close, that a person who wholly turns to God can't do it apart from repentance. And you know, I just don't hear many pulpits today calling for repentance. Last thing I'll share with you is this. They performed miracles. The miracles were always secondary to the message. Say that with me. The miracles were always secondary to the message. He, this and these, these miracles, uh, the, the anointing with oil, you know, you go to James 5, verse 14, 15, it's the same anointing that is spoken of, all symbolizing the Holy Spirit, all symbolizing the very presence of God and the comfort of God and the healing power of God. And they went and they laid their hand on sick folks and they went and they sought the temporary comfort of people who were sick by healing them. But the main reason they went was to share a life-giving, eternal life-offering message. And that was the message of the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's our mission, folks. That's their mission in the gospel. And we need to be mobilized for the mission. Would you bow your heads, please? Every head is bowed, every eye is closed.